Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with today's trading action. Now, let's just get into this early because there's a bit to cover, right, or unravel. Now, we had the US inflation numbers come out. I was uh, preparing myself for, for a slightly weaker number than the 3.4%. Um, now, what we got is the year-on-year -year was 0.1% stronger, the month-on-month 0.1% -month stronger, and, and even the core numbers, just 0.1% stronger. Now, that sort of level of variance would usually give us about a 30, 40 point move. But I tell you what, the market must have got itself bent out of shape because we've seen some huge moves on this. Now, as I was saying, I was sort of banking on sort of weaker numbers, get the dollar moving lower um, across the board, right? Euro, sterling, Aussie, all going higher. Now, that didn't play out, but even still, like, there was a massive immediate reaction after the number. And I'm talking like a 30-point gap on most instruments. It's almost like the, the market had got itself into a situation where they'd, they'd got out of the long dollar positions and were sort of pretty much banking on weaker numbers and they didn't get it, right? So not only were their new positions getting put on, it was um, it was like a like a shift, right? This is And, and it's quite surprising. And that's why I was saying like 0.1% different it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. And we have seen significant moves here. Uh, now, when you're looking at these charts, I was saying this to the uh, guys last night when we're sort of having a look at this event. The It might look like you look at the charts and you see Euro was sitting around sort of 108, 50, 60 sort of level. You know, we, we've got that nice trend line there in place. I was thinking about placing a pending order, you know, just in case. And I thought, well, you know what, stronger numbers have already been factored into, into the market. So we're not going to get that much of a re reaction. The thing is, well, the reality was, okay, it sort of went from here to sort of 108.30, like in a millisecond. And then it just continued to sort of free fall, sat around 107.80 and then started to drift lower from there. So like it tells me that the market was not prepared for it. It was uh, totally unexpected bit of a shift in the whole sort of Fed thinking now that I think what everyone's gone now is, okay, forget about the Fed. They are no longer cutting rates anytime in the next couple of months. So they're out of the game. And then we start to focus on these other instruments, right? So this is a big clean out of positions. And talking of clean outs, I mentioned this uh, at the end of the uh, trading session yesterday, we had uh, dollar CAD sort of shooting up here uh, after the US CPI numbers. The thing, the, the trade here was, probably the one that unravels, right? So you let the CPI numbers come out, let the market sort of do their thing, and then you can add the other components together. And what I'm talking about is the uh, uh, dollar CAD. We had the uh, the Bank of Canada, right, the press conference. There was no change of rates expected, but this press conference, uh, it's a bit of a divergence with uh, the, the high or the interest rate cycle, right? The Fed are definitely on hold. And the Bank of Canada came out dovish, right? It's the, it's the old perfect double whammy, right? That means, okay, we've already got dollar strength in the market. Uh, this is obviously US against the CAD. CAD weakness on the back of the Bank of Canada. And that's where you get that sort of follow through move. Perfect move there through that technical setup. Anyway, and uh, I know a lot of the... Uh, a lot of you ex more experienced traders already know this. And that's why I sort of avoided that CPI number. Once we know what the dollar's doing, then it's easier to pick off what's happening across the board here, right? So you look at the, and this was to be expected straight after the uh, those numbers came out. Once we started to see the move, the US equities were going up. They've been sort of bashed up. The uh, bond prices are down, which means the yields are up and the dollar's sort of flying topside, right? Now, how long is this going to last? I don't really know. Because, as I said, it's a bit of a shift in the market uh, with regards to the, the dollar sentiment and the Fed sentiment. That's the sort of key to it. So now what we need to do is, is piece it together. But just like the Fed, right? I mean, sorry, not like the Fed, the Bank of Canada, we have the ECB today. If these guys come out, well, once again, there's, there's two, well, there's three options, neutral, dovish, or hawkish. That's where the next big move is going to be. And the press conference will be very much highly anticipated. We do have some core PPI numbers, US jobless claims. Um, like the, the, now the market's active. I can tell you that because it's easier to pick off. If these US numbers, for instance, came out really weak, which which all the data suggests it won't, 
right? I'm sort of starting to think here, let's just get real. The US numbers are strong. Inflation's high. These numbers have got to be strong, right? So that's what I'm sort of doing. Instead of like looking for the turn, the surprise number, let's go with the market because and that's what we'll get. But the fact is, if these numbers are weak, the dollar will correct uh, a portion of that move. If it's strong, we'll get some consolidation. Now, with the ECB, as I said, the press conference is going to be very important. No change of rates expected at this point. But I'm thinking dovish, like the Bank of Canada, like that now we've got a chance because now we've separated all the central banks. Let me just explain this part. The Like the Fed, okay, we're on a hiking, uh, sorry, cutting cycle and waiting for that next bit of data to cut again. Same as the RBA, RBNZ, um, Bank of England, ECB. Now, RBNZ have said inflation is a bit of an issue. <clears throat> so be it. But the rest of them are now, the US is over here and the rest of them are on the other end of the cycle. So trading is going to be easier, right? Now that we know those CPI numbers, don't worry about if you missed the opportunity. I can tell you the price action after the event, it looked like it was easy. There was gapping. It would have been very troublesome, the initial move. But we, we did see it obviously continue. The uh, So the ECB has got to be on your radar, right? And just with the way the Aussie and Kiwi have been bashed up last night, like Euro and Sterling, uh, inflation numbers here out of China, important for the Aussie and Kiwi there as well. So just keep an eye on that as you go forward. But it's going to be tricky, right? ECB, because you, they come out with a statement, no change of rates, and they read through a bunch of stuff. But that's when it gets interesting with the press conference, right? That's when they, you have the unrehearsed questions and answers. And that's where we'll find out. Like, there doesn't seem to be anything really positive about the numbers in Europe. So I'm thinking, you know what? Look for that dovish signal. And that's where the trading opportunity is going to come from today, right? And if you're looking at the at the euro, you might think, well, okay, it's done. Well, it's done on a day day basis now, right? You look at uh, actually, let me get the uh, the tool here because this is where you start to sort of factor in and start to work out. Uh, okay, how far has this gone, right? In a day, okay, it's gone 140 points, 139 points. I can tell you, most instruments will stop in a 24 hour period at 150 points. Okay, it's just the way it works. So will that go anywhere today? Not today, but the start of the European session is a fresh day, right? You can see how massively oversold it is. Coming into the ECB, you might see a little bit of a retracement, but then it's going to be on for young and old, right? And you might want to check out the uh, Euro crosses for that as well. All right, guys, interesting times, like the uh, big surprise moves on small variants in the US CPI numbers but it does open Pandora's box for uh, more opportunities going forward. And it really does show that uh, how starved the market was of a move. And uh, they jumped in very aggressively. All right. So a bit of a shift. Think of it this way. Strong dollar uh, for now. No Fed cuts for the, just, just put a line through those. Let's focus on uh, the other currency pairs and see what they're doing with their rates. If we get like, like the Bank of Canada, we get some dovish signals. We're going to get some big moves. All right, guys. All the best. Cheerio.